Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Magnius and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Dinosaurs. We have so many things to talk about today. First of all, I uh, I decided to start trying to organize my chess. I uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. I really, really enjoyed like, the fact that I can now say if I, if I have some bones I can just be like, Kerplunk, and they go in, and it goes in fine. I saw this on some other people's YouTube channels, and I was like, huh, I've never thought of that before. So we're going to be moving some of this stuff back here. But that is not the most important thing about today's episode, no. Probably the most important thing about today's episode, other than the new dinosaur research, is that we have reached 30,000 subscribers. Yay! I'm very impressed. That is approximately a third of the way to our long-term goal. And I am very, very, very pleased about that. And to celebrate that, in addition to the new dinosaur news, which is also pretty big, we're going to go through and we're going to say hello to all of our little creatures. We're going to say hello to Coco. And we're going to say hello to Fruit Loops. Cute little dodos that they are. A lot of people are saying, hey, Magnus, you should make some more dodos. Why don't you throw their eggs down? I don't want tons of dodos. Dodos are not like chickens. I don't I don't think that like having a million dodos would really make me happy. And uh, I like them being so few that they can actually have names. Here's Charlotte. Charlotte is the daughter of our original Strawberry and Charles in our last map, or so I claim. Nessie, Nessie, one of our fans actually made a drawing of Nessie. Nessie don't care. And I posted that to our Facebook group, which if you haven't joined it already, please join the Facebook group. That is now the primary way that you can talk to me if you want to send me messages. Um, I do not really respond to emails so much anymore because Gmail has changed their layout and stuff and it's very difficult for me to respond to people very quickly. Whereas uh, Facebook is still okay, so if you want to talk to me, please send me a message on Facebook. All the way back here, like, in the jungle, Nessie is chillin', because Nessie don't care. Nessie, she does her own thing. I, I don't know what she does, but she's freaking huge now, which is great. I, I love Nessie. I just wish that she would stay where I put her, but no, she refuses, and I accept that, because Nessie is a free spirit, rebellious, sort of like a teenager. I wasn't really a rebellious teenager at all. I just stayed in the library and read books all day, because books are awesome, but... You know, maybe in another life I was a rebellious teenager. Over here we have two Triceratops. We have Freya and we have Triton. Freya and Triton. Uh, they don't move around much, probably because they occasionally glitch through the fence. This version of Fossil and Archaeology mod has all sorts of problems with dinosaurs glitching through everything. Nothing can hold them, nothing can contain them, except for, apparently, stone walls. Over here we have Manny, our mammoth, and there's our little dodo that we're going to be naming today. We'll get to that in just a second. So there's our dodo. Over here we have Spike, I believe his name is, our giant spinosaur who is probably glitching out and stuck right here. He doesn't move at all. It's a very sad spinosaur. Before we... Oh, no. Looks like our velociraptor has once again... Gotten out of his enclosure. Ugh. Man. You, you make me really, really sad, little Velociraptor baby. Really, really sad. Uh, I guess, I guess I'm just gonna let you run around then. Maybe, maybe if you end up dying or something. I have, I have plenty of Velociraptor meat to clone you. But yeah, that's, that's our Velociraptor Thor. Thor absolutely refuses to stay in this enclosure. I don't know why. Again, guys, fix the mod. Fix the mod. That would be great. Over here we have our little Chomsky. Chomsky is adorable. He's a Compsagnus or something like that. I call him a Compy. Also, occasionally I refer to him as a Microraptor because, I, I don't know, Microraptor just sounds awesome. We also talked about Microraptors and their... Their research they've done on Microraptors at one point in one of our episodes. You can go back and find it. Now we have to run up the stairs because all the way up there somewhere is where hopefully Terry is still chilling. Hopefully, oh, I need to fix this. I need to remember to fix this. Ugh. 
I can't believe I dug a hole through this mountain. It's the craziest thing I've ever done. Yay, okay, Terry is still alive. This is Terry, our pterosaur. The successor to Perry, who actually ended up dying terribly. Oh no, wait. No, 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 this... This is Perry. Terry is the one who died. Yeah, so Terry is the one who fell to his doom and suffocated and blocks and all sorts of wonderful things. This is Perry. Perry is still alive for now. He's just chilling. Maybe one day we'll fly him again. If we ever decide to leave our, our little area full of dinosaurs. Look for other places to find fossils maybe because I'm starting to run out of fossils in the caves that I frequent. And down there, there is the beginnings of our our cow pasture, our cow farm. I actually need to run down there and get some wheat, because we need to continue that and make some more cows. But also today, we have dinosaur news! Yay! But first I would like to say something about our 30,000 subscribers. Once again, I say this all the time, but when I started YouTubing, it really was just a hobby. I had no idea that so many people were going to join because of Minecraft Dinosaurs and then later watch my other series. I had no idea that such a wonderful thing would happen. I... I really didn't know. Like, it amazes me even to this day that so many people decided to show up. I am eternally grateful that you guys think that I am moderately entertaining and some of you even think I'm educational, which is also a very big surprise. It gives me warm fuzzy feelings in my belly to think of all of the people watching my videos and appreciating them. I would like to thank all of you. I thank a lot of you personally when you send me messages on Twitter or on Facebook. That's another thing actually, I'm learning how to use Twitter. Uh, Lewis from Mario Cat Gaming is helping me out on that. He uh, he sent me some messages so I, I like tried to figure out how to use my messages. Something I had never done before. All of the other times I just, you know, used it to pump out my videos. I didn't use it to do anything like actually talk to people, but I'm trying to change that, although I don't go on Twitter that often, so we're still working on that, but nonetheless, still the easiest way to get in contact with me is via Facebook, so please go join the Facebook group if you have not already. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm sure that that is, that is plenty of wheat. I'm gonna make myself some some bread as well, because I'm hungry. That's good enough for me. Alright, let's go lure some cows. Or we can just breed cows, that works too. Oh, 30,000 subscribers. I thank you so much, guys. I had no idea. I'm still surprised. It still seems like a dream sometimes, like when I meet new people and they're like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I make YouTube videos and they don't believe me at all. They're like, people don't really make money on YouTube unless you have millions of subscribers. And I'm like, no, guys, I, I promise you, I, I am indeed living off of my YouTube revenue and it still amazes me to this day. I had no idea that I would ever end up doing this, so... We need one more cow. Maybe. You! I have chosen you, cow. In the meantime, when we continue building our, our cow enclosure and getting cows and things like that, let's talk about dinosaur news, because this is indeed Minecraft dinosaurs. I really need to make a T-Rex enclosure. I think maybe that'll be the end of this episode and the beginning of next episode. But yes, yeah, so dinosaur news. A new giant carnivore was discovered in North America. Now, North America had quite a few large carnivores throughout the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. The Probably the most famous ones were the ones during the Cretaceous. Uh, I should... Let's do it here. You, cow, come here. Cow! Cow! Come here! Look at me! Come! Come! Look! 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 I have, I have wheat! Oh no 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 no! Come here cows! Come here guys! Nope! No! The cows are escaping! The cows are es Why aren't they following me? Why? No! Get back in your cage! 
Ow, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cow, come here. Come here. Why aren't you following me? I have wheat. You. You can follow me. Yes, yes. Come here. I'm gonna push you in. I'm gonna push you in. I'm gonna push you in. There you go. Oh, nope. Get, get. What? What? Oh, man. So, you cows are probably gonna end up being killed by creepers or something like that. I'm very disappointed in you. Come on. Come on. Yes, I have wheat. I have wheat. You guys love wheat. Come here. Get. Nope. Get in there. I will attempt to talk about the... I will attempt to talk about the, uh... The giant carnivore that they discovered. So, okay, this, the name of this giant carnivore, it's one of the three largest carnivores of North America. Siachmikirorum? Something like that? I don't... There we go, there's one. Siach Mikirorum. It's one of the three largest in North America. It lived approximately 98 million years ago, which is the early Cretaceous, for those of you who may not know. It's not the late Cretaceous when T-Rex was the king of the, the dinosaurs and stuff like that. But T-Rex was around... Well, not T-Rex, but Tyrannosaurs were around during this period, during the early Cretaceous. However, they weren't very large. And probably the reason they weren't very large is because they had to compete with this guy that I'm just gonna call it Siach from now on. Alright, that's that's great. So you guys are all in there. Let's let's make some more babies. There. Okay, that's good. Now let's go back and sleep before the giant spiders eat us. Yeah, because Siach was running around being an apex predator that it was in the early Cretaceous, the Tyrannosaurs of the time weren't able to evolve to be much larger. Although after Siach died and went extinct, the Tyrannosaurs did go into sort of an evolutionary arms race, and some of them, like T-Rex, became quite, quite larger. There were quite a few T-Rex species, actually. But that's not important. We're talking about Siach. This thing lived about 98 million years ago, and it was a... Car char Charodontosaur? Car Charodontosaur? I'm not really sure what that is, but apparently there weren't very many of them. This is only the second species that's been discovered. The earlier species was Acrocanthosaurus, if you have any idea what an Acrocanthosaurus is, because I don't know what that is either. But it was discovered by paleontologists who worked at the Chicago's Field Museum of Natural History. All the way back in 2008. Yeah, 2008. Isn't that weird? So, I remember telling you guys many, many times that in paleontology and, and archaeology, basically what ends up happening is that people find things. What in the world is this? What the, Why did I do that? Was I, like, trying to build something here? I don't... I have no idea, but I need some cobblestone, so... But yeah, so paleontologists and archaeologists, they generally find things. Archaeology, not so much, but when paleontologists find things, it's usually like random bones. Here, for example, it was in Utah, in Utah's Cedar Mountain Formation, apparently a fossil bed of some sort. And after they find them, they sort of like pack them up in plaster, they send them to a museum. And the museum just holds on to them, basically. They keep them in a back room, in a storage room, until eventually someone has some time to check them out. Usually in the cold winter months when people don't have time to be out working in the field, and it's too cold so they don't really want to go out there anyway. But so they just store it in a museum, sometimes for decades, sometimes like 20 years goes by before anyone can actually look at bones. And then they're like, holy crap, this thing is like the largest snake that ever existed. Or like, this is the largest carnivore that we've ever found. And all sorts of amazing things happen when people finally take a look at those bones. But in this case, this, this was unearthed in Utah back in 2008. So five years later, they finally know enough about the bones and they've categorized them. And they've done their research and stuff. And they're like, hey, 
This is a freaking huge carnivore that fills in approximately a 30 to 40 million year gap where we didn't know what the apex predator of North America was. Now, judging by T-Rex remains, what well, not T-Rex, I keep saying T-Rex, by other Tyrannosaurid remains, paleontologists knew there was probably some really big dude that was like eating stuff and stopping Tyrannosaurs from being apex predators. But they had never found any of the fossils before, or maybe they found them but they didn't categorize them correctly or something like that. And so, they were out looking, and they were like, where is this thing? Eventually they found the Siach stuff, they found, I think it was a hip bone I think they found first? And then they found enough other bones to figure out precisely what this thing was. And when they finally found it, they were like, oh, here we go, here's our apex predator, and suddenly everything made much more sense in the world of paleontology. The early Cretaceous is better known to us now, and things are freaking awesome. Other than that, there's not really much any, any more dinosaur news. There is some dinosaur... That is not what I wanted to do. Why, why was I doing that? Um, Like this? Yes. All right, very good. I, how do I make... I'm I'm not really sure how to make a gate with stone, so I'm a little bit worried about that. But I'll figure that out eventually. Can't really go and check the wiki right now in the middle of recording, so we'll do that later. But yes. Whatever that thing is called, Siach Mikorum. Apparently that's named after a paleontologist or a family that supported a lot of paleontologists back in the early days. Funding, funding things. If you guys want anything named after you, by the way, the best way to get stuff named after you is to provide funding for some sort of research or school. If you give money to a university, like a couple million dollars, which, I mean, you guys probably don't want to give a couple million dollars. What in the world? Hmm. I wonder, does this work like this? It does, oh, okay. Suddenly I understand. Um, that means that I should put one here and take this one off. There we go. Oh, that's, that's sort of strange, I didn't expect that. But yeah, if you want something named after you, give a couple million dollars to a university. I guarantee they'll name a gym after you or something like that. Those, those silly universities are always doing things like that, naming things after. Actually, I should probably break this down and attempt to make more babies. There we go. Nice. Alright, protect you. Protect all of you from creepers. That'll be decent for now. Alright, so now I need to figure out where to put the T-Rex. The T-Rex is not going to stay in its enclosure at all. I've come to this conclusion. Um, the mammoth seem to be doing okay. The Spinosaurus seems to be doing okay. Just like glitching out over there in the corner. Spike and many. However, our Velociraptors and other things keep breaking out. So, we probably need to make an underground chamber of some sort probably this needs to be huge i think how big should it be how big should it be 10 by 10 10 by 10 is way too small um 20 by 20 maybe let's see where where should we start this about here sure Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh no, that's that's a terrible idea. Okay, so this is next to the water. I should have realized that earlier, but I I'm foolish. I never know what I'm doing building things. This will be fine. Cow, I don't, I don't know what you're doing, but you're making me mad. Okay, here, here's probably a much better idea. Okay, so let's do it here. 
Yes. Okay, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Let's do eighteen by eighteen. Yeah, eighteen by eighteen will be plenty. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And this should line up, hopefully. So let's just. Aha, it does. Wonderful. Alright, so there we go. That's how big our, our T-Rex enclosure is going to be. And we're just going to dig it down into the ground. I don't think I'm going to dig it down to like 18 by 18. Maybe, maybe just 10. Maybe 10 will be enough. I, w I would like to have its head poking out. I wonder how many blocks tall a T-Rex is. How many blocks tall are you, Spike? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... So if I make it 8 deep, I think that'll be fine. Probably. Maybe. Let's see. Where, where should this count begin? Probably from right here. 2... 3... 4... 5... 6... 7... Eight. Yeah, looks fine to me. All right, very good. So we'll dig down off camera to about eight. And I'll try to take out this giant block of nonsense. And then after all of that is done, not only will I have a lot more stone, but I'll have a place to put our T-Rex, because we have T-Rex eggs that we need to hatch. Maybe, maybe there's enough space for two of them. Maybe. We'll see about that. But anyway, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed the news about dinosaurs. Thank you so much, everyone, for subscribing and watching my videos. It's 30,000 subscribers. That is amazing. I love you all. Thank you very much. Please send me a message on Facebook so we can chat. I do respond to all of those. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. My name is Megnius, and I will see you next time.